Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. <coughs> um, we are talking about gravitation and um, we have actually considered a couple of uh, simple cases. Um, we are considering the point mass field of gravitation uh, and also we have considered um, a case when you have two point masses and we were talking about um, gravitational potential of the field created by these two masses and we have proven that the gravitational potential is additive function which means that the gravitational potential of two masses at any point in the space around them um, is exactly the same as the sum of two potentials um, with which each of them, each of these two point masses, um, creates uh, in its own field. So the fields are superpositioning uh, each other. They're adding the potential, the gravitational potential is additive function. So to calculate what's the gravitational potential at any point, um, if you have more than one source of gravity, you can calculate what's the gravitational potential of each and it's a scalar, it's not a vector, potential is a scalar so each of uh, uh, um, objects which are the source of gravity and then add these potentials together now today I would like to consider um, instead of point masses I would consider a little bit more complicated object a thin rod uh, which is uh, which has mass uh, distributed along its uh, length. Um, and I would like to basically calculate what is the potential, gravitational potential, um, at any point around this rod. Okay, so that's, that's the plan for today. Now this lecture is part of the Physics 14 course, um, which is presented on unresort.com. I do recommend you to watch this lecture from the website because it contains detailed notes. Plus it's a course, which means every lecture has its predecessors, which uh, you should really know before you're approaching anything else. So if you just found this lecture somewhere on YouTube by itself, just keep in mind that this is the past part of the course. Plus, there is a prerequisite course on the same website, unisor.com. It's called Mass for Teens. And uh, mass is definitely needed. Now, today, in whatever I'm going to uh, discuss today, the calculus is a must, because we're talking about integration, obviously. So, if you have certain um, hesitations about using integrals, um, then please refresh this uh, from the mass and then go to this particular lecture. Okay, so you would like to know what is the gravitational potential of the rod. So we have a rod which has mass linearly distributed, uh, uniformly distributed um, along its length. And it's a very thin, well, mathematically speaking, this is the infinitely thin rod, all right? In as much as mathematically speaking, point mass is actually a point, it has zero dimension. Now, in this particular case, it's a one dimensional object with a mass distributed along its length. And I would like to know what is the gravitational potential at any point in space around it. Okay, now, um, first of all, it's obvious that if I will have a plane which contains this line and this point and line and point outside of this line do determine a plane and I will consider only this plane I will have only two-dimensional task instead of three-dimensional so when I was talking about space uh, it, uh, the whole thing is just to, to put the proper coordinates I will consider this particular plane as the xy uh, system of coordinates with a z perpendicular to this particular plane and uh, obviously nothing happens in the z right so all the uh, potential at any point in space can be actually determined using these 
um, uh, the calculations made in, in this plane, basically, because we can always, for any other plane, for any other point, we can, we can do this plane and basically calculate what exactly um, the potential is. So, um, it would be probably even easier if I will put this along the x-axis from point A to point B. So, let's say our rod has length L from A to B. And our point where we are interested to find out the potential, it has certain coordinates PQ on this plane. So I have to find out what is the gravitational potential at this point if I have a mass distributed, uniformly distributed along this rod. Well, what obvious solution to this is let's just have a very small piece of this rod and calculate what's the gravitational potential of this particular piece. Then we'll take another piece and another piece and another piece and add them up together. Uh, now, speaking more mathematically, we will divide our uh, segment AB into infinitesimal number of infinitesimally small so, sorry, infinite number of infinitesimally small um, uh, segments. So this is, let's say, x and this is dx. All right? And we will integrate. I mean, after we will find what is my potential d, differential of my potential based on x then I will just integrate it from A to B and that would be my gravitational potential of the entire rod. So all I have to do is to find this function and then integrate. Simple. Alright, now what is this function? Well, we know that if you have an object of mass m then um, on a distance r from it, if it's a point object, this is the gravitational potential. Right? Now, we have addressed this in the previous lectures. But G is universal constant, M is mass of the point object, and R is the distance from this source of uh, gravitation to a point where we are measuring our gravitational potential. Now, what is, in our case, this thing is? Well, mass is very easily calculated for this thing because if we know that the mass of the entire uh, rod is m, let's say, and the length is l, then the uh, density of the mass along the linear dimension would be m divided by l. That's the mass of the unit of length, so if I will multiply it by dx, I will actually have the mass of this thing, we'll call it dm equals to <coughs> m divided by l dx. So this is the mass of this particular thing, and in our formula we have to use this one. So g we have, mass we have, this is a dm, which is m dx divided by L. And now we have to divide by R. Now R is the distance between here and here. Well, if this is x and this is p, then this catchetus of this triangle is p minus x and another catchetus is q, right? So the distance is p minus x square or x minus p, that minus p doesn't really matter since it's a square, x minus p looks better plus q square. That's it. This is a potential, this is a potential of 
this infinitesimal segment of our rod. It has a gravitational constant, it has the mass, and it has, in the denominator, it has the distance from this, as we consider this to be an equivalent of the point mass, obviously, since it's a very small, it's infinitesimally small. And the distance from here to the point of interest where we are measuring our uh, potential. So from, from this point on, it's just pure um, technicality. It, it, it's just exercise in calculus. And here it is. We don't need any more of this. All right. Well, first of all, um, to tell you the truth, if you are attempting to take this integral just by yourself, it might be a little bit difficult. Now, we do have something which is called table of integrals, and there are a lot of simple integrals which look more or less simply. Already been uh, found, determined, proven, etc., etc. So, I personally just went to the um, uh, website where this table of integrals is presented and I just found that integral which I'm interested in which is this one is equal to natural logarithm of t plus square root of t square plus c square plus c Okay, so again, I didn't do it myself. I just took it from the uh, from the website. But however, I don't really trust too much anybody in this particular case. So I took a derivative of this, and derivative of this is equal exactly this, and that's very very easy to prove. What's the derivative of logarithm? It's one over this thing, right? So it's t divided by square root of t squared plus c squared times the derivative of the inner function. Inner function is this one. So its derivative is 1. That's the derivative of t is 1. Derivative of square root is 1 over 2 square roots. 2 square roots. times derivative of internal function. Internal function is t squared, so I have to multiply it by, t, by, by 2t, right? Derivative of t squared is 2t. And what happens now? Well, first of all, these twos are cancelling. If you will take this into common denominator, you will have square root of t squared plus c squared plus t over square root of t squared plus c squared. And here is t plus t squared plus c squared. So they will cancel each other and you will have one over this, which is this. So I checked it. All right, fine. So uh, everything is fine and I can use this particular uh, expression as an indefinite integral. as an indefinite integral which I need for this particular case. Okay, so this is equal to well, obviously g times m divided by l goes out. Now here I have x minus p square. So I will substitute t is equal to x minus p to make it simpler, then my, my um, limits of integration would be a minus uh, p, b minus p, uh, dt, dt and dx are the same because it's a constant, divided by square root of t square plus q square, which is exactly as this one where q is c and t is t, so nothing 
nothing strange with this so let me wipe out this one so I will do this so my answer is logarithm of um, t plus square root of t square plus q square um, in limits from a minus p to b minus p so that's my result I don't need the constant obviously because now it's a definite integral which is equal to logarithm if we substitute b minus p instead of t minus logarithm uh, when we substitute a minus p so difference between logarithms is logarithm of their uh, division res result of their division right so i will put b minus p plus square root of b minus p square plus q square divided by a minus p plus square root of a minus p square plus q square well not such a simple expression mind you right actually i do need the absolute value um so it's not such a simple expression and obviously uh it would be nice if you can um somehow check if this is exactly the right thing and there are many different checks for instance you can check a particular case when our point is exactly on the uh, perpendicular bisector to this particular rod and check again against maybe something which you can find on the internet etc another case which is um, uh, which is uh, researched on the internet in many 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 different uh, um, websites I checked is when the point is here on the same line with this one so there are many different particular cases where you can check this formula um, so my point here is that from the qualitative standpoint problems like this one when you have some kind of a object which is not a material point like rod in this case or maybe um, maybe a ring or something like this um, these are straightforward so qualitatively they are not really very very difficult problems however when you start really doing this thing you might find that it really tends to uh, formulas really complicated like this one for instance um, it should not really scare you and um, I, I wanted actually to mention that these calculational difficulties are just again technicalities they are just calculations computers can probably do something like this very easily what what is important is the ability to break the big problem like in this particular case we have to break uh, the problem of determination of the gravitational uh, potential of the entire rod into smaller pieces which we already know how to do like individual material point which is a point mass that we know how to do it and then considering that gravitational potential is an additive function you can integrate them together and again granted integral can be complicated I, I agree with that uh, however I mean that should not really discourage you because again these are technical problems what's most important is to find out the approach approach is divide and conquer divide your rod or your solid object into smaller pieces and integrate around the whole object so that was the point of this particular lecture I was trying to present this particular problem um, 
I don't know why, but for some reason I was trying to find similar problem uh, on the internet, and I found only a particular case when the point is on the same axis as uh, uh, as the rod, and in one particular case when it's on a perpendicular bisector, um, but only one actually. So that's kind of a strange because it's it's really straightforward thing and obviously but probably people pe people get a little bit scared of these uh, integrals because the formulas are kind of complex and people don't like the complex formulas in any case i hope it was educational <laughs> and um, i do suggest you to read the notes for this lecture um, they are very detailed and uh, whatever i was just writing it's all presented uh, in the notes so read it again i mean it's always a good exercise and I will probably provide a little bit more examples of integration because you see this is gravity integration one. I do intend to have at least one more um, where I will try to present some problem related to solid objects. So we have a gravitational field of solid objects. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.